Hello out there. Really happy to be with you again. Thank you for joining me. My name is Leslie, and this is Lunch with Live Animals. Now, I'm going to share a sound with you today that can be heard just about anywhere in North America. But do you know what it means when you hear it? Now, of course, that's a coyote or coyote, depending on where you're from. But what does that mean? Um, now, I'm going to talk about some of our noisiest animals from our collection today in my show that is frustratingly entitled Croak, Chirp, Hiss, Hoot. <laughs> Don't say that five times fast, trust me. Because I think, you know, I want to talk about the sounds that animals make because I think that nature is just far more fun and intriguing and interesting when you know what it is you're seeing or hearing, all right? So let's talk about that coyote call for a second. A lot of people assume that coyotes are just happy when they make that sound, but actually it can have a lot of different meanings. When they howl or yip, it can be a way to uh, define territory. It can be a way to call the pack back from a hunt. Coyotes can even regulate the number of pups they have in their litter based on the population. So in a way, what they hear can be birth control. Isn't that crazy? Now, there's also sounds out there that we don't hear. Very recently, researchers discovered that rats laugh. Isn't that adorable? When they're tickled. So I really wish I could be a part of this research project of tickling rats. I've got a little video here for you. Now, listen carefully. They're playing the sound of laughing using, you know, uh, ultrasonic technology. You can pick up ultrasounds. And it sounds to us when you're listening like, like a little hissing sound. It's below the lady's voice. So listen carefully for this. Belly and back tickles elicited giggles galore. Rats will chase a researcher's hand for more. Isn't that cute? So laughing is important for the other rats to hear because just like with humans, if you're having a wrestling match, you wanna make sure everyone is still laughing because if somebody stops, then it might turn into a real fight, right? Now there's other sounds that I wanna talk about today. If you ask any kid, what sound do snakes make? They're gonna say hiss. Well, this is a snake here. This is a gopher snake named Willow, beautiful little creature. The funny thing is they don't hiss all the time. They only hiss when they're scared. So really a hiss means, hey, everybody, leave me alone. I'm really scared. And actually, gopher snakes can do this really loudly. <laughs> it's actually kind of intimidating. We're going to play a little clip for you of what it sounds like. That's a pretty intense hiss, right? Now, actually, the reason they can do this is because in their, in their glottis, in their breathing tube, they have a keel in the front. It's like a little finger almost. Can you see the black hole labeled glottis? And then in front of that is like a little finger. So they can force the air through that hole a little bit better. Do you know anyone uh, who can whistle by using their fingers or, or like folding their tongue? My sister can do this actually. She used to call her kids from down the block. It was so loud. It's the same principle. You're forcing the air through a smaller hole to make it a little bit louder. Now, go for snakes. Go for snakes. Also, get themselves into trouble with one of the sounds they make. They, when they're nervous, will twitch their tail. And if they're in the grass or leaves, it makes a little buzzing sound, which I bet you can imagine sounds like a rattlesnake to a lot of humans. And that's unfortunate because humans are not very nice to rattlesnakes. Look, I don't think humans should kill any snakes, but in particular, gopher snakes get killed a lot. Um, and it's really sad because they're harmless. They can't hurt people. And it's because people think that they're rattlesnakes. But I made a little video clip to show you the difference between the two sounds. I think they sound really different. So the clip goes like this, gopher snake, rattlesnake, gopher snake.
Now, I'm putting the snake away right now. <laughs> it's a really different sound, isn't it? Now, I'm going to tell you while I'm down here. It's kind of funny. Our rattlesnake sometimes even rattles his tail while he's asleep. Isn't that cute? So, I don't know. Do they dream? I have no idea. So it's no coincidence that nocturnal animals are some of the noisiest. And I brought some famous nocturnal callers with me too. These are Pacific tree frogs. These are native to California. Aren't they cute? Now they don't live in this. This is just so I can show them to you and show you little frog bellies. <laughs> Isn't that adorable? Now when you hear frogs calling, it means it's the males doing it. And it means, hey girls, hey girls, hey girls. It's calling for love. You know, animals who uh, are active at night, they have to do all their animal business in the dark. So a lot of times it's about calling for love. <laughs> now, you know that amphibians need to be near water. You probably know this. And even their name is dual life. Uh, you know, they start out life in the water. And when they need to migrate away from the water, sometimes they do. They need to migrate away with, you know, if um, they're hibernating or if the water dries up, something like that. Now, how do they find their way back? Well, they have good homing instincts, but it certainly helps if there's a bunch of males down there hollering for where the water is. I'm down here, girls. I'm down here. It's also a territorial thing, so they're kind of hoping only the females respond, but that's not what happens <laughs> because when multiple males are calling, it's called a frog chorus. Isn't that cute? Now, here's a funny thing. You can have a lot of species down at the pond calling at once. Imagine you're the Pacific tree frog, those frogs I just had. They make a, call, a famous call. It sounds like this. Probably recognize it, right? Now, if there's other species down there making a call, it gets a little bit challenging. By the way, these are species from all over the world. You wouldn't have these ones together. But if you're in Florida or Georgia, there's a lot of species calling at once. All right, here we go. Keep listening for your call. It's getting hard, isn't it? <laughs> Now, good thing that we are not good thing that we are not amphibians because it would get really confusing for us. Cool thing is they have the ability to filter out the sounds that they don't need. They can only hear what they need to hear, which is the sounds of love and the sounds of danger. How cool is that? This is actually um, a hot topic for human hearing aids and engineering them. Uh, sometimes hearing aids have trouble picking out different sounds. So engineers are studying frogs to make hearing aids better. Isn't that neat? Now, our cute little frogs, um, they tend to ignore us for the most part when we're doing cleaning and care behind the scenes. But they really love to respond to the frequency of us stirring rocks in a bucket. They tend to croak back at us at that time. Isn't that cute? Now, the other thing a sound can do is tell you about the health of an environment. If you're in Southern California and you hear this sound, not a good sound. That's the sound of the invasive bullfrog. They eat our native amphibians. They eat our, our native turtles, even birds. They're a problem. So if you hear that, it's not a particularly good sound. Now, speaking of calling to get the girls' attention, I've got a couple more sounds to play for you. I'm going to start with one I'm sure you'll recognize. It's a little quiet, though, so listen carefully. <laughs> of course, it's the owls who also call at night for the same reason as the amphibians. Hey, girls, I'm over here. This is my territory, though. <laughs> so I thought it would be fun for the young ones to do the hooting at home with me. So let's do the great horned owl together again. And that's the sound that whenever you ask a kid, you know, what do owls sound like? They go, hoo, 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 hoo. So let's play it again. Pretty sweet, right? Now let's hear another cute one, the burrowing owl, another one that's native to California. Oh, <laughs> 
<laughs> Isn't that cute? I love it, especially the second one. He got really vociferous about it. I want to make sure we heard it. Now, again, every owl, just like every frog, has a different call. And some of them are a little bit less pleasant to listen to. <laughs> We're only going to play one round of this one. and Maybe don't do this at home so your parents don't hate me. All right, let's hear the barn owl. That's a little intense, right? <laughs> but hey, it works for them. The other owls seem to like it. Now, I'm going to be getting out Odin, our western screech owl, while you listen to his very sweet little call. Um, now, watch for his little tail waggle, too. Wasn't that so cute? Okay, Odin fell asleep in here. <laughs> oh, here he goes. Thank you, buddy. Here he is. Everyone say hi to Odin, the Western Spooch. Now, we talk a lot about owl vision because they have these really big eyes. He'll turn and show you in a moment. But they also have excellent hearing in order to hear the others calling around them and to hear danger and to hear their prey. You know, we actually have similar uh, sound. We have similar hearing between the two of us, humans and owls. They can hear better than many birds. We actually have really good hearing too, but we just don't trust it that often. We tend to trust our eyes a little bit more. But we have some similar features. You know, we have these big flaps to help us hear. Owls tend to have a facial disc of feathers that help funnel in the sound. We have wide heads and that helps to triangulate the sound. Same for owls, they have wide heads. But look, we humans can hardly imagine making a full speed strike on prey only using our hearing. But that's what owls do. I'm gonna show you actually some owls striking their prey underneath the snow. You can't see it. Is that incredible? So majestic. All right, I'm going to show you one that's maybe a little bit less majestic, but I had to show you because it's really funny. <laughs> that one cracks me up every time I see it. The look he gives to the camera is so funny. But look, so they're relying entirely on their hearing. Odin can do this. Western screech owls can hop out of a tree and grab a bird in a bush in a heartbeat using only their hearing. It's pretty incredible. Now, it's usually the northern owls who have to hunt in the snow a lot, and they have an extra special feature. Their skull has asymmetrical ear holes. Can you see that there? How one ear is higher than the other? Isn't that crazy? Again, it's to spread it out so they can pinpoint the sound. It's really quite incredible. Now, again, we humans, you know, we tend to not rely on our ears that much, but I've got a little game for you. For those of you who do have uh, good hearing, this is a fun game. You can take a family member and ask them to help you with this. Have them be a twittering bird, just making a gentle snap in a circle right in front of you. You know, right there, it wants to get adjusted. Okay in a circle in front of you. Now you are going to be the owl who reaches out with your talons to grab that twin bird. Pretty easy, right? Try it a couple times and then do it with your eyes closed. It's kind of hard. Now don't give up. Practice a couple times. You actually will get good at this. Adults can try this game too. It's kind of fun. You will get good at it if you just take your time. You know, predators have to practice too. Sometimes they miss their prey. <laughs> it's pretty pretty hard out there for predators. So they have to practice too. Owls have to practice using their vision and their sight together to operate at night. So I had a really good time talking to you about all the different kinds of animal sounds or some of the different kinds of animal sounds and some of the ways I make them. I hope you'll visit us on our Instagram at NHMLA underscore live animals to watch past videos, to check up on our animals. So um, I'm also going to take any questions right now. I don't usually do it, but I'm going to look in the comments. First of all, I will say thank you for joining me. But 
um, until then, I'm going to take a look here and see if there's any questions. Oh, where did the bullfrogs come from? That's a good one. Bullfrogs actually are from the East and South United States. So um, they are brought here for food and they often get released into native habitats, sometimes as pets too. Uh, yeah, rats are very, very smart. Someone made that. Do snakes make other sounds? That's a good one. You know, generally the hissing is about being scared, but sometimes they'll hiss when they're just taking a deep breath. <sighs> they make a hissing sound. Or, like I said, the twitching of the tail. Those are good questions. Um, okay, I think that's all I have right now. But if you have any more questions, uh, oh, has, has anyone met Odin before today? Yes, Odin has been up a few times visiting uh, with people. Um, he's been on many of our uh, programs, but he's also met thousands of people here at the museum. So he's a very popular guy. Uh, if there's any more questions, please do fill them out. I will answer them as soon as I can. But thanks again for joining me. Take care, everybody.